oh my in gosh. Hawaii. Like that is their plant. Yeah. Like they think Anturion is native to Hawaii. <laughs> and I went there, I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by the Houseplant Masterclass, the first ever audiovisual course on houseplant care, maintenance, and more. The course, which is disseminated over a month, has over 12 hours of audiovisual recordings, 500 plus full color images and charts, includes our 350 houseplant care spreadsheet, and more. You'll even get a certificate of completion when you're finished with the course. You could find out more information at houseplantmasterclass.com. And while you're at it, check out our full range of online courses at homesteadbrooklyn.com. Tell me where we are right now. Okay, so we are in the Climatron. Mm -hmm. This is the Tropical Conservatory of the Missouri Botanical Garden. And I basically call this my second home. Oh, yeah. Because I am from a Latin American country. Yeah. It's nice and warm and humid all the time where yeah. I'm from. So this reminds me of home, my backyard. Yeah. Where in Latin America are you from? I'm originally from Venezuela. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, just on the tip of South America. Yeah. A little bit above the equator, but it's still super tropical and super nice. And you get a little bit of the Amazon. Just a, Absolutely. Just yes. A, a peak of it. Well, not a peak. Actually, yeah. a good portion of the country about, I would say 40% of the country is okay. Amazon rainforest. Wow. Yes. Okay. So we got one of the tributaries of the Amazon, the yeah. Orinoco River. And that is just like super nice tropical lowlands, any kind of arrows that you want, yeah. we can find there. So what does it mean to like work with plants that are in your home country? <laughs> oh, it, it's just the feeling of like, oh yes, I know this. Yeah. And I can just like walk, walk literally two, two walks, yeah. two blocks from my uh, office or in Monsanto, in the Bayer building, all the way here. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing a field trip, right? <laughs> and, even, and I don't have to get on a plane. I don't have to pay for a hotel, yeah. so it's just right here, my backyard, for That's sure. That's amazing. Yeah. So, oh, and something else that I always tell everybody when I come to the Climatron yeah. is that the Climatron and I sh actually share a birthday. So the Climatron opened October 1st, 1960. I'm not that old, <laughs> but it's October 1st. That's my birthday, and that's the birthday of the Climatron. <laughs> so as a trivia, like, I was born the same day as the climate change. That's amazing. But you should just run with it. You see, like 1960, and people will be like, God, she looks great. Yeah, yeah, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just checked this morning mm -hmm. uh, because we have a database of mm -hmm. every single plant that we have here in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the garden itself. Mm -hmm. And there are about 3,000 different species here in the climate zone. And this is one of our conservatories. This mm -hmm. is not even the entire garden. Yeah. Of course, we sometimes have several individuals of each one of them. Mm -hmm. And for aeroids, the plants that are dear and near to my heart, we have about 200 species, different species here in the climate zone. Right. They come from a lot of different countries, but we just been collecting them through the years. And we just love to have them and we study them. It's mm -hmm. not just, oh, they look pretty. We actually do research mm -hmm. with them. And that's what I'm here and that's what I like to work with these plants. Yeah. So right here where we're sitting, mm -hmm. we can find a lot of different things. So this big monster over here with these weird leaves, yeah. right? This and is it's a, in flower too. It's in flower. This yeah. is an anthurium. So you usually know anthurium's like the nice red kind of yeah. flowers. Oh, this is completely different. And the leaves are not even hard shaped. They're just this palm looking thing. It's just completely different. Yeah. And it's usually from the Caribbean and the coast of Venezuela. So that one I know very well and I have collected in Venezuela. <laughs> So then if you, if you keep going down below, yeah. so here we have a philodendron, mm -hmm. which could actually be the pignatifidum, which mm -hmm. is pretty common in cultivation mm -hmm. actually, right? But this is just a juvenile, it's a very um, young form of it. Uh, over here, we have something super common in gardens, in right. tropical countries, right? We call it actually wild coffee because the berries look like coffee beans. 
Like that's, in, La, in Latin America, in Latin America, we call that wild coffee. Of course, wow. don't even try this, those berries because yeah. they have all those crystals inside oh, that will like, crystals. Yeah, yeah, they will totally mess up with like your a, mouth. Like a different bakia. Yes, yeah, exactly. Same, same, same thing. thing. Yeah. So the whole family has them. Yeah. In some of the groups, is more than others. I learned that uh, in some cases. Mm -hmm scientists will look at the crystals in order to identify different species if they cannot you know Absolutely. identify it from yes. the flower or so from the location features. where those crystals are yeah. is there in the flowers is there in the leaf and is there in the, the period and the shape yeah. both of those are very unique to genera mm -hmm. or even to species sometimes right like, yeah we have one researcher here that did a huge book of anatomy mm -hmm. of like the internal structure of these aeroids mm -hmm. and he found that it's pretty consistent within a species like wow. this is where you will find the crystal yeah yeah I mean, even this begonia looks so <laughs> much. I mean, you have to appreciate all yeah, the different absolutely, layers, right? Absolutely, you're, yes. you're trying to yeah, recreate yeah. a forest, and you have the canopy, exactly, sub-canopy, yeah. you have the vines, and, you have the creepers. And one know. question that we always get is that, okay, so uh, are all these plants that are here, for example, do they yeah. all come from the same region in the world? Right. And they don't. Yeah. Like, what we usually do is that we place the plants that like the same type of light mm -hmm. and the same type of soil mm -hmm. and the same type of humidity together. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if they're coming from Asia, from uh, Venezuela or from Africa. If they all live in the same kind of environment, mm -hmm. they will grow together here really well. Right. Similar to even like your house. You like a lot exactly. of your house plants are from all the different exactly. places. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And is this a Plaumaniae? So or? this is another philodendron. Uh, we don't even have a, a, a name tag a on name it. tag for I just, it. Yeah. I just see this. This, yes, like, exactly. Ripple. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Like philodendron tends to have all these weird, like we call it um, ornamentations. Like yeah. they like they like to look pretty, right? <laughs> so it's like all these weird ruffles, all these weird scales that we have. And That's, this is just like, well, how many steps did we take? Like six steps, yeah, right? Yeah, I know, I know. And we're, we're already like finding and tons of different I know, things. and we're only nitpicking. Like exactly. We could, we could spend exactly. the whole hour here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this guy in here, I was hoping it was on flower. Well, it's in fruit right there. Oh yeah, there's a right? fruit, yeah. So this is a Monstera. Um, we actually seen this is a true Monstera obliqua. You know the obliqua wow. is the one that has like yeah. two different sizes yeah. of the leaf? Yeah. So this is a true obliqua. Remember there are things like, um, in eBay or in Etsy or whatever, mm -hmm. like a lot and of it's people like, like it's a, really like an uh -huh. Amazonia. Exactly, or something, yeah. something something really weird. So we're thinking this is actually a true obliqua. And is that because you were you were able to analyze the flower when it flowered, or how did you really both things? That? We we compare the mm -hmm. dimensions of the leaf mm -hmm. with the actual type of specimen, the very first specimen that was collected and right. named obliqua, right. and also the actual flower that we got. Okay. So those are in fruit right now, but mm -hmm. we have been able to get it. Uh, in flower as well. Amazing. Yeah, we haven't done the DNA analysis yet yeah. to figure out if it's actually um, the same thing mm -hmm. or if all these things that people are say they're oblique are oblique or not. Uh, yeah. But that would be a really good project for yeah. sure. Yeah. Fantastic. Totally. It's one of the many many things that's probably on your list of things. Exactly. To do. Exactly. Yeah. Look so. at the ginger. <laughs> oh yeah. So it's a huge collection. Once again, a lot of different genera, a lot yeah. of different things. Like this one is just beautiful that thing it's like almost as tall as we are yeah and those are the flowers so we call that in latin america game the emperor's club i think it's about the same name hmm. because it looks like the club that the emperors yeah. use like yeah so like this big tall staff i guess i love hearing about your <laughs> common names that you have because it shares so much of like yeah you know the the culture of it as well oh absolutely yes yeah okay that's great look you have the i know a lot of our calatheas got changed over to jupertias yes. it yes. seems like you have a new mm -hmm. a new name tag there yeah <laughs> so you know what's different now no, tell me. Okay. I'd love to, I'd love to, so, I'm assuming the flower in some So the, the shape that the flowers are born Yeah. In. So if they're born in a, a spiral, yeah. it's a gopertia. Okay. If they're born just in two planes, side yeah. by side, it's a still a calatia. Okay. So there are very few now that are just like this. So calatia yeah. crotalifera, yeah. we have that somewhere around here. We okay. might be able to see it. It's just in two planes, side by side. Yeah. I know Gopertias most of the ones that we grew, we grow indoors have been mm -hmm. changed over to Gopertias. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are the ones that are in a spiral. Yeah. 
So that's the thing, like, we need so many more people studying these yeah. plants because like that, you just, like, it, this is just walking in a garden. Yeah. Imagine walking in the middle of the rainforest, mm -hmm. right? You see so many things and like, I've never seen that in my life. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's probably going to be a new species, and right? It, it could be, and it might be like tattered in the wind and you might oh, have yeah. not like a perfect specimen. And exactly. It may not be in flower. It might not be in flower, yeah. yeah. So sometimes, if we're allowed, we yeah. can bring it back into our collection and wait until it flowers, yeah. right? And when it flowers, you're like, oh yeah, this is definitely the same thing, mm -hmm. or this is no, this is completely mm -hmm. different. So this is why these living collections are so useful too, yeah, right? Absolutely. You can just bring them here and wait until they flower or they fruit. Oh, there we go. Calatea crotalifera. Oh, here we go. So if they are oh, in that's two. So, yeah, that's so distinct. Exactly. So yeah. these are still calateas. Those, the ones that are yeah. on the other side. So like the same as in the Eroy greenhouses yeah. that has one person in charge of it, mm -hmm. here we have two people okay. in charge of 3,000 plants insane. plus. I, how do you so, even do it? You must have to rely on some volunteer work too. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yes, okay. we have volunteers coming in all the time. And sometimes we have interns, yeah. students that are actually interested in biology, mm -hmm. interested in plants. And they ask us to, oh, let me shadow you for a little bit. Let me yeah. work with you and figure out if I really like to do this or not. Right. And that's what I tell all my students. You have to be a plant person mm -hmm. for a day or two to figure out if you like it. Right. Because if you're here, you are sweating, your head is getting all messy, like you're getting all wet. It's like, if it's not for you, yeah. you will not ride away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. This is, this is an interesting grass too. Is yes. this a grass? Yeah, definitely. It this is. is so beautiful. I mean, yes. look, at the, look at the leaf structure on that. So this is definitely what we know as like monocots. Monocots yeah. are just grasses. They're really simple. Their leaves do not change mm -hmm. that much. But then we have aeroids, mm -hmm. which are also monocots, mm -hmm. and when wild. Yeah. They do whatever they want with the leaves. Mm -hmm. Their flowers are completely different, a lot more uh, uh, colorful mm -hmm. and vibrant mm -hmm. than these. And it's just like evolution decided to let's try everything mm -hmm. and see what sticks and what works right. that happen in aeroids. Right. You can see a lot of diversity in mm -hmm. the group, in even one genus, in mm -hmm. one anthurion or in only philodendron, mm -hmm. the biggest genera. Right. Right? You can see a lot of it. Amazing. And then is this a costus? So that's, that's a costus, yeah. yes, exactly. And actually Spiral. the flowers are down here. Oh yeah, there they are. And there we go. Incredible. We got a lot of stuff in bloom actually. Yes. So you can come here in the middle of the winter yeah. and find something blooming. Yeah. It's just amazing. It's just like a very nice way to uh, get away from all the snow and the cold that we get in the Yeah. The cute, nice heliconia. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, and I love these things. So this is a cactus. It's a cactus that is an epiphyte. Mm -hmm. uh, so it grows on rocks and it grows on plants, mm -hmm. but it doesn't actually take any nutrients out of them. Mm -hmm. And the one good thing is that the its spines mm -hmm. are just in these little pockets mm -hmm. and which they are is, not very sharp, right? Which like is how you can tell it's a, ca a exactly, cactus, right? You exactly, know? yes. And this is the stem. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a flat stem. Yep. And it has, the spines are actually the leaves. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have any leaves. Right. So you can kind of transfer all the photosynthesis and all the nutrition mm -hmm. from the leaves to the stem that is green. Right. Mm -hmm. I love all these little things that are kind of like growing, like they seem so insignificant and then you're like, uh -huh. that could be, you know, what is it, you know? It's like, yes. it's just like randomly growing. Yeah. So more begonias right yeah. there, like they just like to grow everywhere. And is this an epiphyllum? Or? Exactly, yeah, that's okay. what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then these are the, uh, mm -hmm. the hibis lanterns. Right? Hibiscus, yes, uh, yeah. exactly, yes. Also, mm -hmm. Beautifully in bloom. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's so much to take in. And is that a Diffenbachia right there? Or no. what is that? Well, okay, so two things. Okay. Uh, Diffenbachia is the one with, with the, the splatter painting. mosaic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the one in front is, a, is an amorphophallus. Yeah. So it's an amorphophallus bulbifer. 
right? And you can tell it right away. It's yeah. the same as this one in here because it has those little yes. brown bulbs yep. in there. Yeah. So if you actually knock that off of it yeah. and put it on the ground, it will grow a new plant. Oh my goodness. So that's the way they usually reproduce yeah. in the wild. They don't even have to set up a flower. Yeah. Like they just like drop it down. So this is, oh, this is an aeroid that a lot of people do not even believe is an aeroid, right? Water lettuce. Water lettuce, yeah. Piece, yeah. So if you actually look at the flowers, which we may or may not have some, they, there is a tiny little spade in mm -hmm. it. It's just so tiny. It's basically two flowers in it, and that's it. But that's what makes it an aeroid. And actually, a lot of the... Uh, a few of the fossils that mm -hmm. we have found like way back then, like millions of years ago, mm -hmm. they were aquatic aeroids, just like this. So there were a lot more of them. Yeah. Right now it's just basically pistia and a few other weird things. Well, there are quite a few like mm -hmm. subaquatic and aquatic aeroids, yes, right? Because exactly. I know, uh, you know, people who are have vivariums and polydariums yes, or whatever. Exactly. Get really exactly. Into the, yes. You know, aeroid side of things. So. Your different bakias, I, I love the, <laughs> I know they're just like such a humdrum kind of yeah, so plant, but like- one in there, yeah. and one in there. But I do love the coloration. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. They, I, they do have a tendency to get leggy in a house, but, mm -hmm. but here and here, they, they're little- Oh yeah, right here. it's flowering, nice. Yeah. Lots of pollen too, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And of course, Oh yeah, it doesn't look that pretty right now, but that's our some sort of cultivar yeah. of Anturium andrianum, which is the more popular one that we have. Absolutely, yeah. yes. And so then that was the very yes, right? yeah, the nice mm -hmm. ginger, good leaves. A lot of folks can often mistake this for a Calathea or Gopertia. Huh. Because of the leaf, if they never see the flower. If they don't see the flowers, yeah. I, can, I can definitely yeah. see that. Yes. So Anturion andrianum was the very first cultivated Anturion. It started in Kew Gardens, mm -hmm. and the gardener there, Brown, he just like dispersed it all over the world, and that's what we got it. Oh my in gosh. In Hawaii, like that is their plant. Yeah. Like they think Anturion is native to Hawaii. <laughs> and I went there, I'm like, yeah, no. Uh, it's actually native to Colombia and Ecuador, but a long time ago we got it up here. Yeah. That's one of their first uh, or the most important export for the flower, flower cut mm -hmm. industry and for the potted flowers. Mm -hmm. So they are like, they really love Anturions down there. Wow. Yeah. And people use it as a cut flower and a potted plant. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Both of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they tend to work a lot with uh, wedding designers mm -hmm. to create new colors for weddings mm. of Anturians because they last a long time. Yeah, right. they last forever. Exactly. Yeah. So the other super neat collection that yeah. we have here in the garden are the Samias. So a lot of cycads. All of these cycads, yeah. they're super old. They were already in on Earth by the time the dinosaurs made it. Right. And they're super endangered in the wild. Mm -hmm. So of course not a lot of people grow them. Right. But in botanical gardens, they are like one of the stars. They're like these collections are super, super good. They do look like prehistoric. How often does this like mm -hmm. change? Does this uh, mm -hmm. change at all? Or do you have to constantly come in and weed or? So I'm short answer is every day. Yeah. So there are definitely things that are weedy. Yeah. And you have to take care of them all the time. Okay, so what does that remind you of? Uh, Darth Vader's mask. Yes. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the flower then. Yeah, emerging. that is the flower. Uh -huh. and it, it, it looks like an Aristolochia. It is. Okay. Yeah. Another aeroid. Oh, yeah. That is super weird, right? Like grasses and yeah. like stuff, they do not have spines. Yeah. Aeroids do have spines I've in quite a few, that. in quite a few things. So these are actually from Africa. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking these really thick spines, mm -hmm. once again, to avoid being eaten by whatever right. big animal we have. And this is, what's this genus? Ancomanis. Ancomanis. Ancomanis, yep. I've never heard of that genus before. Huh. Fascinating. So you can see that 
one thing that you can see, yeah. like it's super easy. And like if, if it's related to the aeroids that are um, the, the basic first lineage of mm -hmm. aeroid or mm -hmm. the second lineage of aeroid. The distinction is the flowers are female and male together mm -hmm. or they're female and male separate, mm -hmm. right? So if you see that it has fruits going all over, mm -hmm. it's because the flowers are both male and female together. Okay. If you see that there is just one set of fruits and then nothing, right. it's female flowers at mm -hmm. the bottom, male flowers towards the top. I see. So this is like the big two groups of aeroids. I see. And is that separated geographically or is it no. not? No, okay. it's not. Yes. Fascinating. So we have in both sides of the world. Yeah. Like everything that you want. So a nice spatiphylum over there. Oh, yes, spatiphylum over mm -hmm. here. Here. So you can see the flowers are yeah. exactly the same all over the spadix. They're female and male at the same time. And that is another plant that I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, people do, when you see them being sold in the mm -hmm. stores, it's when they're in bloom. Yes. You know, it might yes. be something that people overlook if it was just for their foliage. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah, like the foliage is nice, yeah. but the plant, the, the flower just sells it. Right, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they have actually made some sort of research figuring out the air quality in mm -hmm. the rooms mm -hmm. when you have an spatiphylum mm -hmm. and when you don't. Mm -hmm. And they're super good filters of like bacteria and bad odors in your bedroom. <laughs> So a lot of people say like, oh, don't put any plants in your bedroom yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Like these are actually They're always so have. scared of stealing your oxygen. Yeah, I'm like, exactly. It, these like are that's... actually purifying yeah. the, the whole environment. So that's pretty neat. So sometimes it has... Oh yeah, this one right here, but... Oh, open flowers. Right there. Oh yeah, there we go, yeah. <laughs> There's always some open yeah. some flowers somewhere. Have you smelled it? I have not, but it looks okay, like it there we go. Like there meat. we go, <laughs> all yours. That's not that bad. <laughs> I, no say the same, I say the same thing about Amorphophallus. I kind of feel like that's actually strangely nice. I don't know. I don't know, you smell it, it smells there nice. <laughs> okay, no, that one is not smelling right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not smelling right. Okay. I smell the we didn't want that it's smelling bad. Yeah, you're like, okay, right? so that was... smells good, doesn't it? So going back to the changes in the climate zone. Yeah. So every day they weed, every day they uh, water, mm -hmm. and every day something dies, mm -hmm. and you have to replace it with something new, right? right? So this collection is just constantly changing. You never know what you're gonna find. And if you come back three years from now, right. the plant that you really, really wanted to see mm -hmm. might not be here anymore. <laughs> so it's the same as your garden, right? Yeah. Your house. We are yeah. always weeding, we're always changing our, our plants. Yep, exactly the same thing. Do you know this one that's kind of hanging down right here? Uh-huh. Uh, it's a cyclone daisy. It's a uh, corigaini, that's what mm -hmm. it is. So, do we have any? Oh yeah, so at the very top, yeah. way over there. So it has a spadix just like um, aeroids do, yeah. right? But it's a completely different type of flower inside okay. the spadix. And it doesn't have the space. Right. Right? So it's kind of, it's the same group, which these ones are all dead by now. Yeah. So it's the same group as these guys. So okay. this is also a cyclanthus. Yeah. So Panama hat, the fibers right. of the Panama hat come from these plants. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. So that Panama hat that sometimes we wear, that's made out of this. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just like in a lot of different families, the Corrigaini over yeah. there is an epiphyte. Yeah. And this one is just a terrestrial huge thing. Right. So they, Plants are very good at dividing the space, right? So they mm -hmm. don't compete with each other, they have enough resources. Some of them like the light, some mm -hmm. of them don't. So they just live in different levels. Another tiny little anturium, yeah. right? And so you're, you're ex accepting and putting cultivars in here then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. So the collection started 
uh, with a combination of wild plants mm -hmm. and cultivated plants. Mm -hmm. We're now turning more into accepting only, like the new plants that mm -hmm. we're accepting, they would only be new plants, they wouldn't have wild, wild collections, mm -hmm. not cultivated, mm -hmm. not cultivars. But if they have any sort of interest, they look nice, mm -hmm. we might still get a, a, culti a cultivar in. But right. it's not our policy right now. We're I trying see. to make it to uh, showcase what is unique in nature as mm -hmm. it is. Um, right, and I guess you also have a responsibility as a botanic garden for safeguarding some plants, I guess, or absolutely. providing like living collections, I suppose. So, yeah. yeah. So well, that's what we call ex situ conservation. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to preserve these plants mm -hmm. that may otherwise be extinct or in danger in the wild. Mm -hmm. We bring them up here to the garden and we keep them here right. in the hopes that we can repopulate right. the, the, the original habitat if it's feasible. Right? right. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes the original habitat is completely gone. So I love oh, so little that things. One, that's a little species. That's yes. a species one. Wow, that almost looks yeah. like it would be has been cultivated. Yeah. Oh, it has. And it is actually, so out there for Anturion cultivated mm -hmm. cultivars, mm -hmm. we have two of them. The ones that have like an Anturion andreanum base, mm -hmm. yeah. and the ones that have an Anturion amnicola base. Which has like a little thinner exactly. yes, base. Exactly, yes. yeah. So what happened was the Anturion andreanum was the mm -hmm. prevalent cultivar for the longest time mm -hmm. until nematodes started infecting everything that we had mm -hmm. and there was no resistance to them. Mm -hmm. So people figured out, people, I don't know who, yeah. but that this plant is resistant to that, okay. uh, uh, that, that parasite mm -hmm. and it started breeding with this one instead of andreanum. Mm -hmm. So now a lot of the cultivated things that we, that we find in the mm -hmm. market have this shape instead of the Andreano yeah, face. Yeah, that's fascinating. And I think also the color of it. Oh yeah. Like a lot of times they have like this little lavender. Lavenders, like, like yes. yeah. So it's like the reddish yeah. and the lavenders, yeah. And this is a different baki again? Yeah. Wow, it's, it's like, I mean, this is so gorgeous. I mean, it almost reminds me a little bit of like I don't know that spl that splotching, which you see a lot, right, in the tropical uh -huh. forest floor. That mm -hmm. the differentiation of the um, it's like the na it's like the natural variegation, but like exactly. it's, it's like missing chlorophyll in some yep. of those layers. Exactly, yeah. it's, it's dead tissue yeah. basically. Like it's completely dead in there. It's just, Kogo, Kogoyana, it's for sure. yeah. Kogoyana, yes. Kogoyana. Mm -hmm. So probably from Colombia, yes, from yeah. Colombia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of these plants they're naturally variegated and we are trying to create like right. hybrids and things that are variegated it's like right. no nature already did that for us right it did, it did. <laughs> so it's like why, why are we trying to invent again <laughs> <laughs> this one's uh fendleria is that what is that uh -huh. what it is? yeah wow huge so here at the garden, we are still calling philodendron philodendron. Yeah, but it's some of the, it's the matophyllum. Uh huh. Yeah. So anything that is that, yeah. that you can kind of see where the leaf is coming from, yeah. it has like eyes on yeah. the stems, that would be a tomatophyllum. Okay. But uh, we're not 100% sure that distinction holds all the time. So we are conservative and we are trying to use the philodendron, which is the one that most people know, right. until we are 100% sure that it does. Hold. And when would you become 100% sure? Like, what, what do you need to see? Okay, so it started with molecular analysis, with DNA. Right. We just need more sampling of a species. I and see. And uh, a better understanding of the relationships between the species. Okay. And are you using mm -hmm. um, the DNA that's coming from the mitochondria? Are you using DNA that comes from the plastids? Like, uh -huh. what are you... So, for... For the distinction of tomatophyllum yeah. and philodendron, the only thing that was used was DNA from the chloroplast. Okay. And we know chloroplast is only coming from mom, right? right? We don't inherit chloroplast from that. Right. So we're kind of missing the other half of the story. Right. And that's where we need the nuclear genes okay. to figure out, okay, does this really hold for both the maternal side, the right. mom side, and the dad side of right. the story? And has there been any chemical analysis that has been done on it either? Like mm -hmm. just the chemistry at all? No, okay. not at all. Yes. Because that was that was an interesting thing that we were looking at. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, did an episode on Sansevieria and Dracaena because a lot of the uh -huh. uh, Sansevieria, uh, mm -hmm. the Sansevieria have been basically subsumed into Dracaena. Yeah. Yep. And they've done quite a bit of genetic analysis on it. Mm -hmm. But there is also chemistry that they did on it, and mm -hmm. they found that chemically speaking. Mm -hmm. 
they look very similar to one another. Uh -huh. So it, it actually just builds another layer of like potential proof that uh -huh. they are more close. They are like together, yeah. you know, as yeah. opposed to yeah, yeah, yeah. separate. Totally. Yeah. So they they have been a lot of chemical work done mm -hmm. in gingers, mm -hmm. of course, like ginger, turmeric, all those spices right. that we get, like people are super interested in figuring out what are the chemicals behind them. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see that kind of work mm -hmm. into arrows. Mm -hmm. But arrows are not things that people usually eat. Right. So they might not have that like uh, push to get, figure out what are the chemicals in these that's plants. That's right, that's right? right. Like people do eat some arrows, yeah. like taro, like yes, it's eaten all one. over yeah. the world. Yeah. Um, the, the monstera fruits, mm -hmm. they're amazing. <laughs> like they're super sweet. So the plan is to be super, super old to actually to yeah. get an, in, an infructescent that matures yeah. and makes it to the ripened mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. So if you go to, to Miami, to mm -hmm. Florida, you could see like cultivated species of mm -hmm. Monstera Deliciosa mm -hmm. that have been there for years, 60 some years, mm -hmm. and you can eat those fruits mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. The ones that we have in the garden, they are not as um, old. Is oh. this a, what is this? Anturium berrosavaliensis from Mexico. Uh -huh. So the Mexican group is the weird, is one of the weirdest groups of Anturions. This looks like almost like a nephritis. Yes, yeah. yes, it does. And actually, super funny that you say it because the fruits yeah. are orange. Oh, they're orange Just too. like oh. nephritis would be. Oh my gosh. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So it's like very nice, very nice eye. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, but it's definitely Anturion flower, right? Yeah. The flowers yeah, that are flower looks exactly so, the same. Yeah. yeah. So they're from Mexico. I love and, that shape though, that, sh that And one thing that we learned actually from crossing Anturios mm -hmm. is that the Mexican group kind of like cross with each other mm -hmm. really well, but it doesn't cross with anything else in South America or any, in, anywhere else. So they are their own little entity. Yeah. And when we started doing the DNA analysis, mm -hmm. they definitely come out as a very distinct separate group. Interesting. We have no so idea. Wait, so they're the same genus. Yes. But they don't like to cross with one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Geogra the ones that are geographically distinct. Mm -hmm. But technically, shouldn't they be able to cross with one another? Yes. Yeah. Because so they are in the same genus, right? Exactly. Yeah. So do you think that they would need to maybe be put in a different genus? Or um, no, no. Like I, I'm not, I'm not a, a splitter. That's what yeah. we call it. A splitter, yeah, a splitter, a splitter, splitter or a lumper. Uh -huh, yes, yeah, so <laughs> I'm not a splitter. I'm definitely a lumper. <laughs> like if I see a flower, I can yeah. recognize this is an anturium. Yeah. So I, there is no need for me to put it on a different genus. Right. Just because I, they don't cross exactly. with one another. So where where we put it is in a different section. Yeah. Which is a group within a genus right. that is completely different. Right. right. And this happens a lot in a lot of different plants. In anturium, mm -hmm. we have this little group of Mexican things. Mm -hmm. And then we have a little group of Brazilian things mm -hmm. that tend to do the same thing. They cross with each other. Right. They don't cross with anybody else. Right. So these things have been just isolated in their own little geographic space for right. so long right. that they lost the ability to cross. I see. Probably some million years ago, right. they were able to cross. Yeah. But nowadays, they have been so separated from everything else that just was like, no. Nope. Not anymore. Do you think potentially, evolutionarily speaking, like many, 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 many millennia from now, they become so distinct that they may eventually become their own yes. genus potentially? They could. Yeah. Totally. So but they're, they're I'm not going to see it. They're on that working path. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to see it. <laughs> I don't think anybody in my family tree will see yeah, it. That would be exactly. a lot of millions yeah. of years before right. that happens, for sure. So is this more like an andreanum? Yes. Okay. Because you so see the hard the shape yeah. and the reddish right. tone to right. it. Yeah. And then this big guy in there with mm -hmm. the purple stems, is that a like colocation, allocation? Mm -hmm. Which one? <laughs> so I have no idea. That yeah. is one of the most complicated groups. Okay. And, and it's an Asian group, so like neither Tom or I are very yeah. familiar with Asian uh, genera yeah. because we concentrate on the neotropics, mm -hmm. right? But they are super like, it's astonishing. Like mm -hmm. there's huge different air plants. Mm -hmm. And could be, I like seen that the latest research was like colocasia was only one or two species and then allocasia was the rest. Wow. It was a really like a strange result and we're like, wow. Okay. Okay, so we definitely need more studies to figure out what they are. And then there was, there was another one that looked very similar in their Roy Greenhouse and I, I was like, Santa oh, that's Soma? A, no. Well, no, no, I know that uh -huh. one, but like, I, and, I, and I actually now recall that I saw it in Thailand because I said, oh, I hadn't heard of this genus. Studnera? Is it a Studnera? Yeah. 
And then oh, it, I can see. Oh, yeah, I can and see then, why. But, but it's but it's um, but the petiole mm -hmm. attached more. Oh, it didn't have the indentation. The it was more like more in peltate, the, right? Yeah, the, peltate, the, the, the petiole yeah. attached yeah. kind of in the middle exactly, of the leaf. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, I think I had seen that genus when I was in Thailand, and I was mm -hmm. like, and I think I said the same thing. Uh -huh. I've never heard of that genus, and I was uh -huh. there, and I said, I don't think I've ever heard of that genus, but I thought yeah. that was maybe in the Colocasia allocasia group, but mm -hmm. I was completely wrong. Because <laughs> it had a very yeah. similar leaf other yeah. than the fact that yeah. the petiole connected. So something that we're learning for sure is yeah. that leaf shapes tell yeah. you nothing, nothing. about nothing. What, how they are related <laughs> yeah. to each other. There are a lot of things that look exactly the same in the leaf, and right. then when you see the flower or the fruit, you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, I was yeah. totally wrong. Yeah. Look at the beautiful birds. Nest. And this is a great example because mm -hmm. you can get lots of different genera with uh -huh. birds' nests. Yes, shapes. exactly. Yeah. yeah. What's going on here? Uh -huh. uh, this is just dying. It's unfortunately. dying. Unfortunately, yeah. So it that is so not a true variegation. That is an old leaf dying. I mean, it honestly looks like, like little snowflakes or like a leaf yeah. miner or something. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So one thing that you can kind of tell is that when it's only one or two leaves mm -hmm. doing it, it's because the leaf is dying. Okay. When it's the whole plant doing it, then it's more like a variegation. Variegation mm -hmm. is, in, is in your genes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to show it, you're going to show it everywhere in the plant. Right, okay. Oh, and just turn around so we don't yeah. forget about it. Okay. Oh, it's good. Yeah, yeah, the the ones that the lingering yep. when linger, yeah. yeah. So there are only two Anthurians that we know mm -hmm. do that. So when lingeria and it's Keseriano. Yeah. Keseriano is the reddish one. Mm -hmm. And I was actually told that somebody made a hybrid between those two. I Just, think Enid did, didn't uh -huh. she? Yeah. 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 So I think she's actually in the process of registering the cultivar. Okay. So it's gonna be super, super neat. I love that, like, big tail. Is there any sure. understanding as to why, morphologically speaking, they did, they've done that? No, we have no idea. But it looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it looks so good. Begonia. I have never seen it this large. I'm really attracted to the digitate kind of leaf. That looks like the Schifflera, some of those Anthurians that we saw, really incredible. And then this is an example of the Anthuriums that she was talking about, the Andrianums. They have this like heart-shaped space and uh, other cult, very popular cultivar. Yeah. <laughs> it's like looking at the, how thick this is. Yep. So it's there, but it's not flowery. Okay. Have you ever heard of Spaticarpa? No. Ah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so this little guy in oh. here, that's an aeroid. Hastifolia, so then that's it's like it's hastate shape. Hastate shape, yeah, shape yeah. exactly. And so, the spathocarpa, is it talking about the spathe on the carp? Uh, uh huh, the okay. So, carpa yeah. are the flowers, yeah. and a spathe yeah. is a spathe. Yeah. The flowers are attached to the spathe. Ah. So, the spathe comes out, and it has all the tiny little, like the spathe, basically, yeah. is attached to the spathe. Fascinating, so it's like stitched on. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it stinks. Yeah. It attracts a lot of flies. Like that tiny little thing kind of smells. Okay. So I'm I'm into like a lot of uh, it smells right now because right. Like, bad or good. Bad it or good. Matter. Yeah. I'm yeah. just trying to figure out why things smell. Okay. Is this one worse? No. You're like this smells great. Okay. 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 This one. Okay. <laughs> I still don't think that's so bad. <laughs> so that's the same thing that I say for the coarse flour. I know. Like to me, the coarse flour, it smells like cooking broccoli. And that's not bad. I eat broccoli. Is nothing. Exactly. I've smelled so. tons worse. Yep. yep. <laughs> so when people ask me about the, oh, the coarse flour that it stinks so bad, I'm like, no, no it smells like broccoli, yeah. Brussels sprouts. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep. 
great. Yep, right at the end. I, I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. I love the tour. Mm -hmm. It inspires me to want to create waterfalls and like more habitat. Absolutely, right yes, home. yes, <laughs> yes. So the green walls yeah. with the waterfall next to yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Well, I really enjoyed this tour. I'm going to look forward to like learning more about also your research and the smells mm -hmm. and the yeah. as well. But thank you so much. This has Absolutely. really been a wonderful experience. Yes. So we're here open 364 days a week. That's we're crazy. Close, a day, a day. We're day, close a, one day. A year. 364 so, days a year. A year. Yeah, that's what it is. 364 days a week. That would be <laughs> yeah. a very long week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Let us know what you thought about that botanical riff in the comments below. And stay tuned because we have more great tours and discussions at the Missouri Botanical Gardens underway here on Plant Wanami. In the meantime, you could check out my latest book, How to Make a Plant Love You, Cultivate Green Space in Your Home and Heart, our houseplant online education courses like the Houseplant Masterclass, and our other YouTube channel on outdoor gardening and more at Flock Finger Lakes. See you in the next videos.